I think we are live now. Yeah. Yeah, we are live. Yeah, let's start. Hello, viewers. Welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Science. This episode is supported by Science for Society, Indian Humanists, Babu Goginini Humanists, and Rationalists Arena. Today, we have a very special guest who wants to share his uh, experiences and opinions on uh, astronomy, uh, astronomy and space science in particular. Uh, before introducing him, let me welcome my other co-panel members, co-hosts. Um, I have here Sarath Teja Somina, science popularizer and member of uh, Science for Society and BG Group. Welcome, Sarath Garu. And uh, I also have uh, here our young amateur astronomer, Teja Bagari. Master Teja Bagari. Welcome, Teja. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I also uh, welcome uh, Amol Mane, who is an IT professional and amateur astronomer. Uh, he is originally from Mumbai, and uh, he is the co-founder of uh, Dubai Amateur Astronomy Group and Astrophotographer. He is also joining us from Sydney, Australia now. Welcome, Amol. It's been an absolute, absolute pleasure to me to sort of join this call. Thank you. Yeah. Also, we have on the panel Mr. Arjun Nadigallu. He is also from Sydney, Australia. Uh, he is also our uh, member in Science for Society and DG Group. Welcome, Arjun. Thank you, Prasada. It's uh, my pleasure uh, to be here. Thank you. Uh, and uh, now our uh, very special guest for today's episode is Mr. Arvind Paranjape. Uh, uh, so very rarely uh, people get a chance uh, uh, to actually work in their area of uh, you know uh, uh, you know who can make their hobby a career so uh, we have an excellent person here today with us uh, who turned his hobby into a career in astronomy and also has been a source of inspiration for uh, amateurs and students uh, he has completed his masters from pune university and joined indian institute of astrophysics uh, worked at uh, inter uh, University Center for Astronomy and Astrophysics, and he's an honorary member of the Astronomical Society of India. So currently, he is serving as Director, Nehru Planetarium of Nehru Center, Mumbai. Welcome, Arvind. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, so his research uh, involves, uh, you know, sky watching and amateur uh, uh, photography, and uh, actually, I think he's uh, an amateur astronomer since his college days, college days, and. Uh, uh, he's uh, an expert, even I think before uh, this digital photography came, uh, you know, expert in various techniques in astronomical photography, uh, having uh, photographed many celestial events over the last 40 years. Um, and he is also science popularizer. And uh, apart from his own blogs, he also regularly contributes to India's leading newspapers and periodicals. So welcome about again, Arvindji. Thank um, you, sir. Yeah. Uh, today, uh, before uh, going, uh, uh, I would want Teja to start the conversation uh, because I think he he has to run to another uh, program as well. So, Teja, the screen, uh, the uh, you, know, you can go ahead and uh, you know start the discussion with Arvindji. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. It's an absolute pleasure. Uh, so. Just getting started with my first question. It is, uh, why are planetariums important? Not just because you're the director for the planetarium, but also planetariums are of uh, interest to many amateur astronomers and many students. So why is it important for us to preserve planetariums? And why is it important for us to learn about planetariums? And uh, why are planetariums important? Uh, you see, the planetarium started, I mean, the very basic planetarium, if you want to say it, then um, I think it was Archimedes or someone who actually made some model which would help him to predict the eclipses and positions of planets, etc. That was way back. Then uh, there were some people who made uh, uh, simulation, the sky is simulated inside a dome and positions of stars and planets were given. And it was... Uh, sort of uh, uh, teaching people how to identify different stars and constellations. So it was from that angle first. Then after the Second World War, the real uh, interest in planetarium started and it started with uh, um, 
in Germany, and they made this uh, these planetariums with the, the technology that was very advanced at that time, and it was a pinhole technology where uh, on a globe or something the you know, points were made, pinholes were made, and then stars were imaged. Later on, um, uh, in America, spirits came into picture. They made very low cost planetarium, and planetariums became famous. Uh, particularly when the uh, uh, space uh, race started. I see space race, when it started, uh, people got uh, attracted to planetarium. So uh, the space race gave a lot of attention to astronomy. So prior to that, yes, people had this astronomy in their lives, but uh, mostly it was among amateur astronomers, not so much in the public domain. But uh, with the space age coming in, space race starting, uh, people got very much interested in astronomy and people wanted to know, as I see on uh, background of your uh, the curtain with the satellites and all that of Mark, right? So people got interested. But then uh, Planetarium also started playing a role of edutainment. That is when people got interested in astronomy. So they started, uh, uh, Planetarium started uh, teaching astronomy, teaching uh, science actually through astronomy. And then around 85 or so, the digital revolution came and uh, digital revolution about the uh, digital planetarium. And that changed a lot. That changed enormously because your ability to present any scientific field uh, you know, to the people became absolutely possible. Um, and it gives you kind of an immersive feeling. So as I was telling the planetarium, so name, it is, uh, uh, it is a house where you sh show planets. However, today what we have is a uh, dome-like shape where you can simulate almost anything. Now in the digital world, we can simulate the uh, architecture. That is that you have a, you make a building and people can walk through that experience. You can go inside the body. So planetarium started playing roles of edutainment, that is education and entertainment uh, simultaneously. So that's why the planetariums are becoming day by day more interesting, uh, more relevant to the society. And the third thing that happened in the uh, planetarium uh, uh, technology is that because the digital planetarium came in, okay, now we have a unidirectional uh, projection. That is in earlier days, what used to happen is people used to sit in a circle and the sky is simulated. But with a digital thing now, uh, you all of them can look in the same direction. So it became, it sort of became a very large amphitheater. And then um, you see the fantastic amount of uh, uh, images and stories coming out, which teaches science, um, uh, animal science, animal kingdom, you see, uh, mountaineering. So all this became very relevant in the modern world. Um, and um, uh, importance of planetarium came in from there. That seems absolutely uh, yeah. amazing. Yeah, it is. Uh, uh, so my second question is, uh, it's precisely about the Nehru Planetarium. So what are the other activities rather than uh, promoting astronomy, uh, showing the, uh, the planet show in the dome shape hall? What are the other activities yeah. held by the Nehru Planetarium other than this, and which people are not aware of but should know? Yeah, that's a. Uh, I would like to speak about it. See, Nehru Planetarium, right from the inception, I mean, right from the beginning, uh, carried out uh, other than planetarium uh, re many related activities. See, one of the activity has been um, uh, telescope making. Now, planetarium also something which I have forgotten in the uh, my earlier uh, reply. So that planetarium also became a seat for amateur astronomers in those particular towns. Every town, whichever has a planetarium, the planetarium people gave a small place or some place to amateur astronomers, where amateur astronomers come, could come and meet together, discuss astronomy, make telescopes, make instruments. So Nehru Planetarium also started making uh, activities like that. The people would make uh, people would come and make telescopes and uh, meet, discuss uh, astronomical topics. And then Planetarium uh, invited uh, uh, different uh, people from different fields of science. Uh, not very much different, but mostly astronomy. Uh, scientists who are working in different branches of astronomy uh, 
and they could come and give a public lecture. And then all people would gather in a lecture hall where people uh, would listen to uh, some professor, ask the questions. Then Planetarium also carried out a series of activities. For example, um, uh, way back, uh, about 15, 20 years or so ago, uh, there, were, uh, there was one Professor Padmanabhan who came and delivered series of lectures on black holes. Uh, then in India, we have a uh, Professor Narlikar came and gave a series of lectures. So people would uh, interact. So that planetarium became uh, some kind of a, uh, no, I wouldn't say adult education, but citizen science forum, uh, where the science is the only astronomy part of it. So people would come discuss these topics. And then planetarium also provided them with the uh, telescopes to go and do observations or sky map when they were not when sky map was generally not uh, available, they would help uh, amateur astronomers to go outside the city to observe. I don't know, now Amol is here, uh, how much he, he was involved in planetarium, I'm not sure, but much before your time, people used to go to a place called Vangani and observe the sky. Now they have to go a uh, little far away. These activities were carried out. Now in today's world, now, now, another thing, as I said, that the digital, tech, uh, digital uh, technology has come. So what we can do today is that we can simultaneously, what we call the dome casting. So if I'm showing, uh, giving a show here, it can be simultaneously dome casted in any other planetary which has a similar system. So these are the activities we take, we conduct. And another activity which we conduct, uh, which was stopped for a while, but now we, will, we are restarting it, is that with the uh, Mumbai University, we are starting what is called the, uh, planning to start that is, um, extramural course in astronomy and astrophysics. Now this extramural course is for uh, general public. Uh, anyone who is interested in astronomy can come. It is, this is a very well-defined course. And uh, it's about uh, you know, uh, how, some 10 month long course, means about 40, 40, 45 lectures um, you know, would be delivered where uh, people would be made aware of astronomical observations, so various branches, right from the what we call the positional astronomy. That is, the uh, understanding positions of stars in the sky, how these stars behave. From there to history of astronomy, then we also have a, a solar system, how star evolve, variable stars, as you are a member of AAVSO, so variable star observations, binary stars, black holes, everything. So it's a public uh, course which will be conducted. And this course is a certificate course. That is, towards the end of the course, uh, conduct examination. And examination would be theoretical as well as observational. And uh, uh, based on that, they would be graded given certificates. So these are the current activities which we have. Another activity, very similar to course activity uh, with the uh, St. Xavier College in Mumbai, they have a astronomy astrophysics MSc. So for them, certain observational exercises would be carried out at the Nehru planet. So this is the uh, present status of uh, activities other than the planetarium show. That seems very interesting, sir. I should get registered for the yeah. course then. <laughs> I have not talked to them, but I think, uh, let us see, the, after a pandemic break, we are restarting it. But uh, maybe um, uh, for the next year, I would uh, maybe and, uh, from next year onwards, we will uh, I will request them to do, go online for these courses. Ask people to register online, which is which should be possible for us to do. That, that, that's quite interesting. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, welcome. Yeah. Thank you, Deja, for your interesting. I want to say something. Uh, so I just want to add to this, um, uh, in Mumbai, I was part of the Kagol Mandal, uh, a major astronomers club. And yes, as, as sir said, uh, we used to go out to Wangni. So this was a, a farm, uh, uh, some distance from Mumbai. And uh, especially I remember having a stargazing trip for uh, Comet Yakutake and Hale Bob. Uh, and then um, I remember fondly buying my first telescope at uh, the Nehru Planetarium. So uh, yes. this the planetarium was sort of the hub of all astronomical uh -huh. activities. Very very rightly said. Yeah, I think Amol has a very interesting story, sir. I think uh, he has uh, been a visitor for your planetarium as well in Mumbai. And he also regularly 
uh, it goes out for you know stargazing and uh, taking photographs of the galaxies etc because we still have uh, uh, um, um, luxury of uh, you know uh, seeing Not a right. clear uh, <laughs> night without any light pollution here uh, uh, a I little know. outside sydney uh, and uh, personally as well like uh, um, when i was studying i i used to go to birla planetarium that is in hyderabad and uh, um, a lot of uh, good memories so, so you know planetariums have definitely contributed a lot in engaging uh, students and young uh, amateur astronomers in uh, you know understanding science and uh, astronomy in particular um, so with that uh, yeah amul uh you can you can go ahead and uh, you know share your experiences with uh, with planetariums and astronomy and uh, ask any questions uh, post any questions to arvind ji uh thank you prasad uh, you mentioned about the birla planetarium in hyderabad i was part of the aha group in hyderabad as well in fact I, the last time i met uh, mr arvind sir was uh, in pune uh, in 2003 where i think i was leading the team from uh, the hyderabad aquaculture astronomers club uh, in uh, and then we went to gmrt as well so sort of very fond memories uh, there uh, a real good memory <laughs> right uh, one of the things i think uh, amateur astronomers club along with planetarium is uh, to popularize science and bring astronomy to the masses right so uh, I, i was wondering sir because we have been seeing um, there's always been uh, this fight between uh, 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 pseudo science or miscommunication among the general public and then uh, when you approach the the planetarium or amateur astronomers globe uh, group uh, there's a bit of this awareness that we need to bring up to the general public uh with the advent of the internet being so easily available and social media you would expect that there'll be more information but it turns out it seems that there's more of misinformation as well and uh, what you would consider as fringe groups um the moon landing conspiracy seems to have become expanded and become more visible now with the flat earth conspiracy and what not so is it just do you, do you think these are just fringe groups or is it that the social media is growing a platform uh, for for them to give a voice uh, i'm just trying to see how do you balance this how do you address this uh, misinformation flood that comes in and especially when the public isn't aware of what is genuine news and what is actually the scientific fact i was just wondering how do you address that uh, uh, this challenge uh, yeah i understand and this is a very serious question and uh, okay i'll give you the uh, in on this regard i'll give you the story of isop okay there was this uh, hunter uh, who has gone in the jungle to chase uh, rabbits and he has a very powerful dog and then hunter tells the dog to chase a rabbit and rabbit runs and runs and runs and finally he escapes okay then hunter says to his dog that look that is a small uh, body small uh, animal and he beats you so uh, the dog says that sir he was running for his life and i was running for your enjoyment or food i think our case is something like that see our happiness if doing astronomy see most of us who are in astronomy or uh, popular uh, popularization of science come little later but astronomy either scientists or amateur astronomers our main interest lies in watching the stars understanding astronomy for us the fighting pseudo science come later so what happens is that those who are in pseudo science they run very fast they run very hard okay and therefore they beat us all the time what you need is a someone who is a regularly uh, whose passion is to beat them that is one second thing is that uh, we have a mixture of these things so when you say that pseudo science you do this or you do that say i'll give you one example that uh, uh, that you know people go on yatra from one place to another okay now this is their choice so we should leave it to them to decide what they would like to do what is what i feel important is that if we educate people i i I'll, i don't know whether you heard of this name one professor sham tandan he was at ayuka he was from tifr he made one so wonderful statement he said that you light a lamp the, the astrology and pseudo science is a darkness so you light a lamp of knowledge darkness will automatically go away you don't have to fight dark darkness okay 
So this is what, uh, so we'll have to actually decide uh, exactly what we would like to, or how we would like to fight and what we would like to fight. There are some places, fight is totally futile. You know, um, Yatra, etc. Now in uh, Maharashtra, there is this uh, Pandarpur Yatra where people walk for five, 10 days or something. They go without, uh, they go barefoot. And uh, I think there is no point in criticizing them. Because once you, you are not focused in which direction you are going, once you start criticizing, people will come back with a, a counter argument and it just remains on one side. I think what is important is to tell them that, look, okay, you're good. You are walking and you're doing, that's fine. But this is not correct. For example, uh, yesterday when we were talking, that burying child inside the ground during the total solar eclipse, thinking that this is, so come out with a scientific explanation. Or otherwise, you also know that during the solar eclipse, people say uh, there is a um, uh, stout uh, wooden uh, bar, you know, that uh, Oakley, uh, that uh, the instrument where you pound on the food grains to make powder. So they said that it stands vertical. Show them that every new moon, uh, sorry, every full moon time it starts because after all, angle between the moon and the sun never increases more than five degrees. So it is almost overhead. So tell them. So these things which are the, uh, which are wrong sciences is what we should be able to communicate to people. And we should understand that this is a few, this with, if you fight this particular thing, it is not going to lead to you, lead you to anything. It is only going to be a discussion and people will be talking. So fight something which you can actually win. Okay, that is what I, I feel. Uh, yeah, you are right saying that there are many uh, things. I say even, even eclipses time. Okay, let me um, share one or two examples of eclipses. See, uh, 1980 eclipse was a major fiasco as far as public is concerned in India. Uh, it was the total solar eclipse of 16 February 1980. And uh, you may not remember, but uh, those of us who observed this eclipse, we definitely remember. And government was not prepared, astronomical community was not prepared. And what happened was that announcement were made. And I remember in that day, a good, and I, I have not seen the eclipse uh, Goody because I was somewhere else, but a uh, movie was screened on the television, Doordarshan channel, that was only one channel. And people were sort of told not to go out. Okay. Then uh, there was a, uh, later on after the eclipse is over, uh, some people came out and said that it was wrong, etc. Okay, that happened, it was fine. But when 1995 eclipse came, in just about 15 years, so much of awareness was created. I don't know whether you went for the eclipse, but I do remember that all the trains from Mumbai, Bangalore, uh, Pune, Hyderabad going to eclipse track, they were completely, Seats were reserved in approximately 15 to 20 minutes of time after the booking opened. Uh, from the station, the booking opened. We couldn't get the ticket. So we actually traveled by road to, no, I think we somehow we managed to get ticket. But from Jaipur to the track, we traveled by road. Many people from uh, Pune, Mumbai, other places, they traveled by road to the eclipse track. Why this 15 years made so much of change? I think there's one person, I would uh, very happily say that Narlikar and other people who popularized oh, yeah. astronomy so much. And then at that time I had joined Ayuka. So institution like Ayuka, Indian Institute of Astrophysics, uh, TIFR Mumbai, they popularized this so much that people realized that they should go for the eclipse. Now here is a small story about it. The uh, acting director of Vigyan Prasad in those, those days he used to say, so he, had, he saw the 1980 eclipse. He was also young. We were college and uh, or passed out uh, students. Okay. So our age was just about 20, 25 years. Okay. Then um, uh, 1995 eclipse, we were all grown up. Most of us were married and all that. So he said that uh, when I saw the eclipse, I had three friends, three women, girl, uh, uh, girls with them. Uh, three girls were there. They were all pregnant. And they have a child, they have their own children, okay? And two of them are doctor and one is engineer. Okay, so he used to say that, look. And then we say other way, that again, this should not be made into myth, that if you watch the eclipse, your children will be scientists and engineers and doctors or something. So what care you must take during the eclipse, you should take other than that. You have, I mean, 
normally what care you should take when you have you are a pregnant person you should take that and forget about it eclipse doesn't harm anyone if you normally do any eclipse time i would eat something in front of television camera that look eclipse is in progress so we keep telling people uh, that um, this is what happens but having said that i would also point to you that I, just across the door we have the planetarium and many a times now it has become slightly less but when i came about 10 years ago if there is a eclipse people would call up call us and say that there is a eclipse what my uh, uh, daughter should do or my daughter in law should do because she is pregnant so people would call up not just that if you show mars on the tele uh, uh, dome they say oh you are showing mars to mere ko mangal aayega kya so if people, <laughs> this is incredible people to that extent so this has happened but again uh, back to the point that yes uh, we can we, we have to keep educating people as much as but uh, uh, it is also true that young generation is much more aware of these problems and uh, we also see that many a times this is another question which we discussed yesterday uh, another that many a times what happens is that we do it for our elders whether you believe it or not uh, you have to get married and your grandmother or grandfather says that look unless you do it this way i will not be happy and just to please him you go ahead and do it so then i feel i also feel that look if the old man is made happy by doing something whether i believe it or not so it is happiness of old man is much better than what i believe because what i believe i will not do it for myself so this time i am doing it for the elderly person who has lived uh, eight, uh, 60 years 70 years of life 80 years of life Thank you, sir. Very good insights into that, and especially the last part. Uh, yeah, even if uh, you know we can't uh, uh, spend a lot of time and effort trying to convince elderly people, I think what we must all must do is uh, try not to indoctrinate the next generation into believing superstition and pseudo science uh, related things. And uh, yeah, um, so. that 95 eclipse i think the solar eclipse right so i think it brings some eclipse. memories for me as well so i think i was an intermediate uh, yeah. or, or first year of degree when uh, i used to you know make some apparatus to watch the eclipse on a wall like you know using yeah. cardboards and magnifying glass and you know a mirror uh, yeah. from outside so you know it goes through that and you know project the, so the exact eclipse is uh, clearly seen as a reflection yeah on the wall so uh, i mean at that time even doordarshan and other uh, um, um, channels that they used to uh, conduct programs and uh, you know educate people about uh, what it is and how to safely view that and uh, you know how how what are the precautions required and at the okay. same time um, even now like uh, uh, it it, uh, it is sad to see that uh, Uh, a lot of people even educated people uh, uh, you know they are asking right questions to the wrong people uh, especially you can see that in the tv you know channel yeah. discussions especially on these uh, you know celestial events like eclipses which is the most common celest- celestial event that uh, you know people uh, uh, you know get to see unlike you know meteor showers and all where uh, you know is very less chance to actually uh enjoy that so uh even now like the mainstream media like uh, um uh, you know i i don't know why we need to try to bring a balance between science and the other side of it uh but uh, it's very sad to see that uh, you know people who don't know any anything in science in in the basic high school science they they try to scare people uh saying that you know uh, um giving all kinds of instructions as to what to do what not to do what to eat what not to eat and uh, <laughs> things like so what what's your uh, uh, um uh, what's in your opinion um uh, do we need to like you know counter or try to educate people are we doing enough there or or uh, should we bring laws to actually like i think some karnataka and maharashtra i think some states have these anti superstition laws uh, so uh, are they enough for like w- w- what else what can we do to um, you know address uh, people like that who who are spreading uh, take the example of astrology say for example so yeah. how how do we try to counter those arguments saying what is right and what is not what is 
you know how yeah uh, how do you uh, explain the scientific method to the common people mm, yes uh, you know what you have asked question this question is a very uh, explosive question explosive in the sense that many times i gave a talk on why i do not believe in astrology i i don't i just want to tell people that look whatever you want to do go ahead and do but this is these are the arguments why i do not believe in astrological prediction and what i normally say is this as follows one of the things i mean uh, uh, the only problem with this is that there are a certain group of people who would come out and say no but we believe or my grandfather believe and so on and so forth but the argument which i give and which generally convinces a reasonable number of people about 15 20% people uh, go are on the you know who are on the wall so i am able to pull it on the other side of the wall some people are very strong they will not jump on even though they, they believe um, that astrology is wrong but they will not accept it they will not come to this side so if they have decided they don't want to come to this side you can't do anything about them however uh, those who are on the wall so I, my no, normal argument I, it goes like this that uh, what is the population in our city let us take for example uh, as a matter of uh, convenience the 24 lakhs okay so how many sun signs are there so 12 uh, sun signs so each sun sign will have uh, 24 divided by 2 lakh people okay so now if astrological prediction in a newspaper i am talking in the context of newspaper so if astrological prediction says that uh, be careful leo those who are born under leo sign okay uh, be careful uh, you will have accident okay so if that is so then hospital should be flooded with people born <laughs> under the leo sign so have these astrologers gone and check their predictions even if you take 1% at least you should have 200 people uh, going to the hospital uh, with uh, some kind of injury and what about for whom it is predicted uh, for the sign which is not predicted what about those people going there they have no answer okay so people this argument many a times people uh, agree with me then other part of it is the same that, that uh, okay scorpions will have uh, scorpions who should expect visitors are baba visitors have to come from some sunshine so you say that <laughs> capricornians will go to scorpion for the lunch or something like that why don't they say this but then um, uh, on a little bit more scientific uh, uh, argument it is that uh, if you uh, see, uh, see the internet there is a nice site which gives you a scale down solar system so when uh, um, uh, at the planetarium when uh, teja was asking so we activity we conduct we conduct a school student activity where we teach student astronomy so what we do normally is, uh, in all these activities we ask student to make a uh, scale down model of the solar system so nothing is said about astrology or anything we just say okay let us make a model so you make a model which is six uh, sun is made 6 inches in diameter okay then based on that you make a, you draw diameters of planets and their distances from the sun so all that is done now what happen in, under this scale what happens is that if you make sun which is 6 inches in diameter okay then the diameter of mercury comes out to be 1. Uh, sorry 0.5 mm now we are all this there is nothing astrology said here uh, until they say it's all science so what is 0.5 mm okay this is my clutch pencil so clutch pencil uh, lead is 0.5 it is accurately 0.5 okay uh, venus comes out to be 0.7 so you have another clutch uh, pencil lead which is 0.7 earth is 1.4 so then we ask them to measure some object like mustard seed is actually 2.2 mm what is you get so all this thing happens after that we measure the distance so how much is the distance if you keep mercury from the sun this is a 0.5 mm lead okay you have to keep it at 6 meters how much is a 6 meter okay my this table is 1 and 1/2 meter so four tables you have to keep so if sun is kept here mercury is there and what is the size 0.5 where jupiter will come jupiter will come 480 meters now then you ask this question that you do you think that jupiter which is just like a, a 15 mm ball can influence human being which is on the mustard seed 
Okay, so what will be the size of muscle seed? And then all of us are sitting here, influence you differently, me differently, him differently, her differently. Do you think it is possible? Immediate answer comes out, no, it is not possible. So this is a very indirect way of telling, telling the astrology doesn't work. So this is what we do. Then they have another question, which is uh, about, uh, uh, about the uh, sun and moon. You see that when the moon is there on top, uh, they, they always say that a human body is 75% water. So the, when the tide comes, uh, it lifts the water up. Okay, uh, Tide comes and lifts the water up. So I said, okay, fine, that is good. So how much water it lifts? So I think the international standard is something like 30 meters is maximum it goes. But in Mumbai, it is about two or three meters. But let us take the maximum uh, 30 meters. Okay, let's take 30 meters. Then again, you scale it down. Okay, so how much water it goes compared to diameter? Diameter of Earth is uh, 12,700 kilometers. So compared to that, uh, 30 meters is how small? So, okay, 0.01% water goes up. So yes, it will go up on, in your body also 0.01%. So that will also happen when you do Shirshasan. Shirshasan is a good yoga exercise. We do, isn't it? So water goes up. So what's great about it? So, so when these arguments are placed, generally people... Uh, Happily agree. <laughs> Thank you, Arjun, for your smiles. <laughs> so, uh, reaction. So, uh, this is how what we do, and uh, people do remember. I mean, I uh, I remember that many times people come out and say that oh, you told us that that time, and we remember and so on. So, uh, these are the ways uh, one could use to tell people, and then also instead of telling you don't do it. I say, I don't do it because of these reasons. They gel better with you. But when you order someone something uh, that don't do it, then people automatically have a resistance to, uh, I mean, no one likes to take orders, you see. And if, particularly yeah. if you have believed in something, then uh, they said, who the hell you are to teach me what I should do. So mold it according oh. to them. Yeah. In fact, uh, it's, uh, it's not the day-to-day -day job or activity of scientists or science popularizers to actually go and, uh, uh, you know, counter argument every single thing that does uh, con man or swamiji's or, uh, you know, people, people who has a lot of influence on others uh, do like uh, um, willingly, like, you know, yeah. uh, with a, with a, you know, with a bad intentions of, uh, you know, increasing their business and other things. So, uh, but the problem comes when, uh, yeah, um, I think uh, uh, only when this, you know, if they say that it's their belief, that is okay. Yeah. But only when they say it is science and it has science, or, you know, then only, you know, <laughs> we have to uh, come out and, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, talk openly. More and more uh, scientists, especially, you know, uh, not just that, you know, they are doing their job, but they also, I, I feel that personally, they also need to come out and, whenever possible and uh, appropriate should come out and talk about science. So with that, uh, I'll, uh, I'll uh, um, ask Arjun to join the participation, uh, Arjun Nadigallu. So um, welcome and uh, yeah, you can, you can continue asking any questions you may be having for Arvind. Yeah, yeah. Firstly, uh, thank you Arvind uh, for your time today. We're very fortunate to have you on board and um, just, just trying to imagine the time at which you took on, you know, astronomy as a hobby and turned that into a career. Uh, it's not something people were doing at that time. Um, not just astronomy, but also just, you know, following a hobby like you did. Um, yes. So I'm, I'm fascinated by your journey. And I, I, you know, I had a lot of questions uh, on that, but staying on topic now, now that we're talking about pseudoscience, and you said it really nicely, um, pseudoscientists run a lot faster than scientists. Um, so in my own little way, I've, I, I'm not related to science at all. I've, I haven't studied science past high school. Um, I just have an appreciation for it, I suppose. Um, so I'm the guy who ankle taps these pseudoscientists as they're running around. Um, so I set up a YouTube channel where I kind of explore how you can debunk their, their claims. Um, and I think one of the interesting things that has happened in the last, I'd say, 10 to 15 years in this space is they've become very clever about how to hijack certain scientific terms to make their points quite convincing. So anyone with 
you know, half a knowledge or, or someone with, uh, who's been brainwashed with a certain narrative about their culture or the predominance or superiority of it, I feel like they can easily be fooled. Um, and so I'll give you an example of something I, I want to, you to react on uh, from your point, point of view. So there's an irrigation minister, I believe it was uh, Karnataka, I can't, I can't be sure, but uh, there's an irrigation minister who recently did a puja ceremony for, for, for the monsoons to come sooner. Um, so when he was criticised, his response was, well, if ISRO can do a puja to send an orbiter to, the, to Mars, then why can't I do a puja to, to bring in the rains? So I think this is an example of how pseudoscience can pollute the minds and kind of proliferate all public policy, all the conversations we have that matter will get polluted. Um, so from that perspective and keeping in mind that the role of your planetarium and what you're trying to do, um, how important is it in India right now, given the situation, um, that we all point these things out? Uh, you talked about that, but why just that? Um, mm. uh, see, India uh, brought some uh, aircrafts, fighter planes from uh, uh, France. Okay. Yeah. So coconut breaking ceremony was done. Oh, okay. wow. Yeah. But at the same time, the local people also did the Christianity thing. Okay. Mm. So they had this uh, padri uh, putting the uh, water on it and all that stuff. Right. Now, this is, see, these politicians do this for their own purposes. Mm. Okay. They want to get the votes from people. And you are also correct that uh, when the uh, minister says that when ISRO does it, see, we, we have to understand that these people are not scientists. They are engineer, technocrats, and all that. And when yeah. something, see, this particular fear that whether something will work or not, if there are, whether there is a, some kind of another force, that will not go so easily. Yeah. The other fa factor, which I'm also, I realized that over a period of time is like you, uh, particularly Amol, I would say, uh, say uh, okay, I'll give my example that uh, sure. when I travel, I used to travel by train, I mean, uh, about uh, 25 years ago or uh, around that. So train, if you, you introduce yourselves and what you are doing. And then I'll say that I'm working mm -hmm. for astronomy. So they immediately take me there for an astrologer and start showing their hands to me. <laughs> so I said, look, I do not believe in that. And what used to happen was, and this, is, this has happened on a number of times. What used to happen is that uh, we, I'll start doing arguments about astrology, why it is wrong. And then some elderly person will care, oh, you are bacha. Once you grow up, you will understand. We have an experience. <laughs> so here you can't beat them. So yes. as I said in the beginning, that only, I mean, I feel very strongly that everything we should do, but we should concentrate on the school children. Because if you imbibe in them at this stage, they will carry it and they'll carry it. And you'd show them uh, how the experiments are to be done. The third thing which I would add here is that we used to do this one exercise after this, you know, after the sun solar system model, we would tell the students to go and talk to about 10 people in your surroundings and ask how many of them they believe in astrology really. Okay. And I'll tell you the encouraging thing is that most, of course, these students were from Pune, but it is not necessary that uh, all families are scientifically inclined. Uh, okay. So they would go. An interesting fact we have seen is that elderly people particularly, they do not agree. They do not say we have seen life and we know it doesn't work. They will not openly publicly admit it, but when they go to their grandchild, they will say that it does not work. So I think we'll have to again look into it, look into this problem very rationally, that which are our target uh, area and where we should not waste our time. Like say, uh, why this Karnataka minister, even there was this, some minister said, uh, why even Jail Singh, I think, uh, or some senior minister supposed to have said, that I do not believe in Darwin. My ancestor did not come from, I, me did not, I did not come from monkeys. Okay, we were like that. What can you do about these people? They are highly influential. So if you talk anything against it, you're only adding little uh, fuel to the fire. So best is to ignore these people. Uh, they, are, they are going to do it, believe it or not, whatever uh, uh, they are doing it. 
just give me a minute I, my office phone is ringing just okay no worries sir no problem and yeah, that's a good question arjun um um so it shows the irresponsible behavior of uh, some top scientists in public positions where uh, that gives a wrong message to the society and for, you know gives fuel for the others to actually support pseudo science continue arvindji uh, so many times i feel it is best to ignore them best not to talk about them and just allow it to die because more we talk more other will uh, other people will be saying and it will be in the uh, you know circulation whatsapp and all that and then maybe as you say like uh, we can do uh, make some whatsapp uh, stories about science put something interesting which gets circulated and also believe it uh, one thing all of us must have uh, experienced that uh, parents of children in the age group of 8 uh, 9 now they have become very keen to teach their uh, children to learn science and other uh, field okay i mean they are quite uh, um, uh, i mean quite inclined to sort of talk to um, uh, schools and teach or okay, i would say that they want to learn, have their children studying something so at that is the time we should be able to mold the child because if you mold the child the child will carry it for long see anyone who has crossed 16 17 i have seen even 16 17 year old uh, youth sometimes some people strongly believe and not only just believe they say that because my grandfather said this um, i and i am not going to change so what do you do with such people yeah uh, i agree uh, okay. hello Yeah, I think I, I, I'm with Arvind G on this with regards to the focus on children. I think that's where we get our most um, effectiveness in terms of, you know, getting, getting the results that we want to see in the world ahead. Um, but at the same time, I, I feel like uh, there needs to be, a, you know, multiple, um, a, a multifaceted approach to these problems. So you've got to have the scientists like Arvind G who focus on the science. Um, at the same time, you need to have a number of uh, individuals as well as organizations who focus on debunking pseudoscience. It's, it's a team effort, you know, we can't completely rely on scientists to do this. Um, or, all we can do is look to them for the knowledge and, and the attitude, and we can try and use that to leverage um, the scientific positioning. Uh, so, so yeah, that, that's, that's greatly put that the focus on children is just so important. I, I completely agree with you on that. Actually, you are absolutely correct, uh, and uh, we need to do a lot more. And one possible thing is that uh, uh, that uh, babas and all that. So you just collect things. Uh, see whatever uh, magic they show. Go and do the same magic in the school and show how it is done with the scientific thing. So there is nothing great about it. It's not God given. And children enjoy. Um, peers, teachers do enjoy. There's only one factor. Sometimes your uh, uh, head of the school is against it and Baba believer, then uh, they will probably chase you out. But we have to keep doing this. Or maybe, yeah, it's a good idea. Make a short videos on WhatsApp, you know, this short video and uh, send it. This gets immediately, uh, you know, go like a fire. Uh, circulate. Yeah. So we can, we can actually, it's a good idea. We make these uh, videos and say that, okay, like, you know, the Bhabuti comes out, how it comes out, you can do it at home and so, uh, yeah. scientific uh, experiment and let it carry in different languages that yeah, might absolutely. be one solution yeah. that may be a solution. Yeah. Yeah. There, there is a youtube video youtube channel called science is dope um yeah. and it's this is basically what uh, pranav on that channel does he takes something that is unscientific and it shows why um it, it is it is a myth um so yeah. so yeah people are doing this but we definitely need more people to do it so more, more. um yeah but you know, again, the thing is that going to you, YouTube and also I have noticed that anything which is more than six to seven minutes, people will take, okay, I will listen to it later on. But if it's yeah, a true. three, four minute capsule, which says that mm. this is it and, and with a little bit of joke or fun in it, uh, then people mm. immediately pass it on. And going to YouTube, true, people, uh, youngster, youngster would go. But if you make a four, three, four, five minute capsule and send it on WhatsApp, People immediately watch that. So yeah, people, true. yeah. So if you have such thing, do give it, send it to me. I will also send it to my various groups, and then they keep copying it to each other. 
Awesome. It goes let's, viral. Let's fight it. Yes, let's fight misinformation in the same yeah. way. <laughs> it's un it's awesome. unfortunate to see the decreasing uh, 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 duration of the attention span that the new generation is giving for. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, I agree with that uh, um, approach, uh, like anything that is long uh, and like a lecture, like people, they'll either at the most, uh, you know, save it in their watch list. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, so uh, so uh, uh, so in those lines, like uh, similar lines, like we have been uh, doing regular science, our programs in uh, um, a leading Telugu web radio called Tori, mm -hmm. uh, where uh, every Saturday, uh, 9.30 IST, uh, we do live show, uh, like uh, sometimes it can be um, uh, a little uh, 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 educational or formal, but most of the other times, like we take questions from listeners directly, like uh, it, it's live on every Saturday, like some 100,000 people listen to that. And after that, uh, we use the same thing to uh, archive in Indian Humanists YouTube channel. So we we are getting a really good feedback from that, like uh, most of them, uh, but there will be some <laughs> uh, some people always, uh, who, you know, who, who uh, without knowing some things like, you know, they, 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 they leave some messages, but uh, mostly a lot of people are interested and actually they come with uh, all these, uh, you know, pseudo scientific claims and uh, seek answers from us. So um, that's uh, that's really interesting um, to know uh, and, and to see the change. Uh, so uh, yeah. So so one other question is previously, like uh, like late eighties and maybe mid nineties, uh, the most uh, pseudo scientific things. Uh, um, uh, that were uh, propagated were like materialization. Say for example, like one of the babas from the Andh Andhra Pradesh, uh, he used to take materials out of thin air and then uh, you know, bless his uh, uh, disciples with uh, the vibhuti or, uh, or some you know uh, gold chains or uh, rudraksh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, nowadays, like they are, they also uh, you know are catching up with the scientific terms like you know dark energy and uh, things exactly. like that. Yeah. Where they are saying, uh, you know, science doesn't know everything, and uh, you know, there is still a lot more. That scientists themselves uh, say the same thing, right? Like, you know, what we know is uh, uh, less than, and um, you know, what we need to know. But they are using that argument against the scientific community again, saying that you know, your science has not grown up to that level. Uh, you know, that is the reason why uh, you know you can't get an explanation for a certain thing but it will be unveiled like in future, something like that. So um, uh, for example, say again, like uh, uh, there was an instance where uh, NASA, uh, uh, the claim is that NASA declared the sound of sun uh, yeah. as O. <laughs> uh, uh, so <laughs> they are trying to keep, uh, you know, catch up with science and scientific terms. And in a way that itself uh, is a win for the scientific community. That's what I personally, Believe so they are not saying you know it is a belief they are saying it is science because they also know that by you know saying something as science it is more close to the fact and truth. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, uh, this uh, Baba taking out uh, this uh, chain and all that this reminds me of very old story very old story um, that uh, in Bangalore uh, you remember the Satya Sai Baba. Yep. Uh, so the story is that uh, PC Sarkar, who was a, one of the greatest magicians this country had uh, produced. So PC Sarkar said, I want to meet you. And Sai Baba completely refused. And in those days, I mean, even uh, emails, of course, it's a much before email era. So he, Sai Baba refused to meet him. Try whatever hard, he refused to meet him. So then PC Sarkar, what he did was that he said that from some Bhopal, uh, he said that I am Maharaja or such such place, and I want to have your darshan. So <laughs> Sai Baba gave him audience, and this fellow got down from a uh, posh car. So Sai Baba came all the way to the gate and uh, to greet him. And then when he bowed, he put his hand and uh, got some uh, ashes. Okay, 
So he gave it to PC Sarkar. He took it in his hand, okay? And then he squeezed the thing and gave him Gulab Jamun to Sai Baba. <laughs> then he, Sai Baba realized that he is a different ball game. He turned 180 degree around and he went away. <laughs> so that is the story. So we have, uh, yeah, so uh, what you said is right. We should, uh, yeah, there's another problem that in this community also, there are some people make use of these names, God Particle. Actually, God Particle was not God Particle. Uh, Hicks had said that it is a God and Particle. Yep. Right? So <laughs> uh, now what I've started doing is that many times when I send email, you know, you have that email tagline. So it is not God and Particle. It's not a God Particle, but it is a God and Particle. So a lot of people would read and then start asking you why it is so. So I think we have to try all sorts of small tricks and uh, think because even many a times if you ask scientific community you find that scientist has some pictures of uh, uh, god goddesses and they will come to their office and put agarbatti they keep it in their office um, we, i mean like then other party has a very high chance of telling that look uh, they are doing it so what's wrong with it these are scientists i face this every now and then Every now and then, different communities, they keep telling me that how uh, various scientists believe and what are you trying to tell? So I feel I only, in my, see, in my business, when I have to take out certain amount of time regularly to do uh, anti-astrology drive. So I do it as best I can and everyone should try doing that. And I think and another thing is I think we should collectively fight. So small snippet small uh, three minute video if you guys are making and if it is in uh, english or telugu whatever it is we can translate it we can uh, uh, put a marathi or hindi uh, translation i mean uh, soundtrack and said it we should do that you're absolutely correct i agree there i completely agree with you sir yeah amul you have any questions no just what i sort of add to that uh, i think we should make understanding science and having a scientific temper as part of the culture itself rather than treating it as an academic subject. I mean, science is not just to get sort of into good grades and getting into good uh, academic institutions. Yes, a lot of, lot of uh, parents, when the kids are in that uh, stage in which they're going to get into higher uh, grades or trying to get into a certain academic institution, are very focused about science. And the kid does study hard and they do get into um, either engineering or medical what, or what have you. But it should not be the, with the narrow focus of just getting into a, a, a college or even you getting a job. It should be to understand science at a fundamental level and, and sort of understand how it affects you as a, as a, as a society as well. Because we are so much af uh, affected by science and as a result technology and it is a disservice not just to the scientists, but to yourself as well. If you don't understand science at its core, okay. So that having that scientific temper and having it as part of culture is very important. So as as uh, Arun sir mentioned, these one of the ways to do it is sort of having these small sort of media uh, sort of clips because we need to fight with that same sort of language, right? So just as as WhatsApp can be used to spread misinformation, uh, if you have something similar, uh, I can I can sort of share something from my side where I had. Um, where I take a photo of, let's say, the stars or the nebulas, so that draws attention, right? And 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 when you start explaining the science behind it, that gets people interested. And then on top of that, you say, and this is not a specialized domain. You guys, you can go out, okay, have a planetarium software, and you can go out and see the same thing with your eyes under the sky, under the stars. Have a telescope, and you can see the planets uh, and see the rings of Saturn and and what have you. So. Uh, having people do it themselves okay, rather than relying on some authority figure okay, I think is the very sort of foundation of science and that is what I think uh, we as science popularizers should encourage more and more. Just wanted to sort of add that. See I live in an area uh, in the south uh, Mumbai and why I live in that area is because Nehru Center has purchased a flat uh, and that is how otherwise in that area, by any stretch of imagination, I couldn't afford to have a flat like that. Now, this is called the South Cuff Parade uh, Association, uh, Cuff Parade Residential Association. Okay, so they have a magazine. And uh, the editor of the magazine asked me if I can contribute something. And I said, look, I can contribute 
home experiments, kitchen experiments, which you can do. So I contributed for a while, absolutely no response to that. I even offered that if you do it correctly, I will take you to, uh, I will give you free passes for the planetarium, no response. Other thing is that we are also, say, relatively very small community. See, it, it would vary from uh, uh, city to city, but in Mumbai, scientific community is so small. You have another community, which is a business community, okay? Almost uh, entire business fraternity would lead that. And then they definitely believe in God. So as Amol said that you make some picture, you know, you make a nice nebula and colorful picture and they will use it and say that Sri Krishna is playing holy there. Okay. So <laughs> that's the kind of argument they will come out with. So it's, a, it's not a simple thing. It's a very big fight. Another example I'll give you here, uh, which, is, uh, uh, which was told to me by a, um, by a teacher who is the commerce uh, teacher okay, in a commerce college. So she said that when she entered, you know, you why would you go and teach in this college? Because of various reasons, your husband is uh, working in that city. You can't go far. You can't get a, uh, or even if you get a bigger job, you may have to go somewhere else. So you are, condition that you, are, you should take that job. So she said that when I go to the class, student would not even, uh, they will not only be facing, uh, they will not be facing me and they would make a circle and sit on the desk and talk with the boys and girl hugging each other and chatting. And if I say that it is my class that you pay attention, boys have audacity to tell her that, look, it is your job to teach, you stand there and teach. We, it is our job to study. We will decide how to study. Don't meddle with us. So she said that in the initial days, I would get angry and I would walk away. And then they said that you are paid to do the as if these boys are paying for that uh, teacher's salary. You are paid to do the job, you do it. So she said, finally, I have come to conclusion that I stand on the table uh, desk. I do my teaching and I go away. I don't care who is listening or not. those who are listening, they would sit in the front and listen to me. But otherwise, I will go away. What can you do to such people? If they have decided money is the power. I'm sorry, I... You see... Uh, hello? Uh, so, see, what is... Uh, see, today is... Uh, I accepted it today because uh, today was my off. Yep. But unfortunately, my colleague, uh, the manager of the planetarium, uh, he had some emergency. So I had to take his place. And therefore... I'm, and it's a very busy day for us today. So no yeah, excuse me for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So that is what that is where I was trying to tell you. Okay. Yeah, it's it's not an easy fight. It's not an easy path. Uh, sometimes children are conditioned by their parents. So make it attractive and what best you can do, keep doing. But then again, anti the pseudoscience fight, like uh, this fellow had, right? Uh, uh, Tamil Nadu has a very powerful group of people who fight pseudoscience and they go around various villages and demonstrating how it is done, uh, how various uh, babas play a role and uh, magic tricks they carry out, but actually it is not magic and science. Kerala has, Kerala Sahitya Parishad has. So Even Telugu states has uh, something uh, called generic Jnana Vedika. Generic so um, they do the similar things. So, yeah, yeah uh, we don't want to hold you for a long time, considering your uh, your situation there. Uh, uh, but one last question uh, from our side, like uh, uh, this is from Josna Palwai, who is also co-founder for Science for Society. Right. Yeah. Um, so, um, so she has a question asking about the inclusiveness in the field of science. Is there a proportional involvement of women in higher rank positions? What are some challenges that you see inhibiting women and how can this gap be filled? Because most educational institutions outside India are partnering with corporate sponsors to create awareness and opportunities for high school and college going schools. So she's referring to the special campaigns to raise awareness, workshops, internships and scholarships, etc. So is this something discussed within the Indian scientific community? Uh, if yes, like what kind of programs do Nehru Planetarium in specific or any other uh, uh, scientific uh, institutions are doing for girl students? So she's basically talking about gender bias, right? 
yeah so uh, the lack of proportionate representation of uh, girls or women in in, in higher scientific uh, uh, one position. thing is certain in india if uh, uh, in a government services whether it is state or central government the salary is equal i have i have told that at some places women get less salary than men for the same position but india in india it is not so okay the only problem what uh, see this this topic has been talked number of times uh, at various forums so and i was not directly involved in it but what i see is that uh, women do get appropriate uh, representation we feel proud of them for example uh, we keep talking about women scientists who took part in mars mission as far as uh, astronomy is concerned today the uh, director of indian institute of astrophysics is a woman and then a very good uh, both of them are my friends so uh, other one uh, because i knew her from uh, almost my beginning days anupama gc anupama she became the president of astronomical society of india uh, then present secretary is a young woman so they are represented and the community seem to understand that is true but it is also true that uh, the representation is not as strong as that and many a times what i heard is that if they are not given sufficient uh, uh, help or other sufficient recognition women tend to leave their jobs this is what i have heard i have not involved myself i mean i don't have first hand knowledge but whatever i have heard at, uh, at various forum it appears that at a certain stage then she takes a back seat and said that okay i will look after the home and uh, do the uh, and uh, get out of the race for higher position but i think i'm i'm certainly we are very proud that uh, uh, annapur dr professor annapurni and professor anupama uh, whom i know for many years are at the top most positions in their organization so it's a very great why even in uh, planetarium also we had uh, um, uh, dr ratnashree in delhi who was the director who did a fantastic job uh, in bangalore um there was dr shailaja and uh, yeah so there are uh, names like that so if they come uh, they that i mean yeah but i i can't say more than this i can't say that i have direct personal knowledge about uh, uh, employment or giving up uh, but as far as opportunities are concerned in india i think they are very equal opportunity yeah this is true <laughs> here sir Uh, so uh, arjun um, you can uh, uh, wrap it up uh, with any closing questions you have yeah just one last question um if there's a young let's say a young girl on the back of that question who's watching this and you know being inspired by your work and and this particular talk that we've had um what advice would you give her um on her path to becoming uh, an astronomer um much like yourself um uh... i will uh, i will go slightly uh, differently uh, see we started this lab for school children okay and the reason for the lab is that uh, they have uh, laboratory experiments uh, which are prescribed in their textbooks but normally what happens is the teacher comes on the class with the apparatus demonstrates and the apparatus goes back to the uh, wherever it is to go so we say we develop this lab we have a lab Where children come, student come and do the experiment themselves. Okay, so when we started this lab, I made it sure. I told the when we do do the proposal, so I told my our senior authorities that look, I will only employ uh, women, okay, uh, and that too I will not employ someone who is retired or just fresh from college, okay, who has. possibly uh, completed her bsc or msc looking for better opportunity or has a time and she can come and work and we have as as it stands today there were five of them we started about uh, five years ago okay but then two years have gone into pandemic so uh, these uh, uh, young uh, young ladies three of them are pursuing their phd's in different parts of the world one is in poland another one is in japan and another third one is in usa they are doing their phd one is almost completing phd then two students uh, two girls who work uh, at the planetarium they have gone to icer pune where they are teaching science to others so uh, make it makes me feel proud of it and um, 
yeah so the effort from our side has to be there to encourage them uh, and then other of course another reason also that because it was lab and then we have uh, 10th 9th 10th standard girls adolescent girls are coming so they would they would feel comfortable if there is a woman teacher so this these two reasons but i'm so happy that these girls are doing so very well in their uh, uh, life so we try doing that it's terrific. That's that's really inspirational. Thank you so much for that. Um, yeah, thank you, Prasad Agari, for this opportunity. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, Amal, if you have anything else to say, or Prasad Agari, please please go ahead. Thank you again. Oh no, I just want to express my gratitude uh, to be part of this talk. And again, uh, uh, it's it's been nice to meet uh, Arvind after so many years. Yeah, many years. Yes, thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you, Arvind ji. Uh, it is a, a, a pleasure to have you here in this episode of Let's Talk Science. And uh, the primary motivation of uh, uh, not just spreading awareness and understanding of science and uh, improving the culture of science, um, uh, but also in fighting superstition and uh, pseudoscience and misinformation and disinformation. Uh, so I hope uh, these efforts and the uh, uh, continuing efforts in future will help uh, uh, bring more people close to science and truth. Uh, and uh, just to continue that uh, last uh, part, like the women in science. So our next uh, guests for the next couple of episodes are going to be Prajwal Shastri. Uh, yeah. She is a professor from Indian Institute of Astrophysics and also Stella Kafka, astrophysicist, yeah. CEO, American Meteorological Society. So I hope... Uh, they are uh, uh, more uh, as interesting uh, as these discussions are. And uh, I'll close uh, uh, today's uh, discussion with that. And thank you very much again for, for uh, uh, giving your valuable time uh, uh, on a weekend. Like, again, like you are still <laughs> working. Uh, it's a work day for you as well again. And also Mr. Arjun and Amol and uh, Sharat Tejagaru and... Uh, also, other people who are behind these efforts, like Josna Garu, uh, BG Garu, and uh, um, uh, especially our uh, young astronomer, amateur astronomer, Mr. Teja Begari as well. So yeah. um, that's uh, that's for today's uh, episode of uh, Let's Talk Science. So we'll meet in another episode with another uh, uh, guest discussing about uh, about. Uh, talking about science. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Keep me posted about it. I will also join whenever I can. Today, it is just that uh, my colleague is not there for some reason. Otherwise, I would have been in a much easier position at home. I would have talked to it. Anyway, thank you so much for inviting me. No worries. Uh, and uh, we'll definitely meet again in some time in, sometime yeah. in future. And, uh, yeah. and uh, we'll be happy to uh, uh, help you share your experiences and opinions. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great time. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.